On occasion, I will perform a third thin needle aspiration of a given target. The reasons for doing that would be either to sample a large target widely or to try to improve on an apparently scanty harvest from the first two attempts. In my experience, the first thin needle aspiration of a given area is the best opportunity for a good sample. With each subsequent try, the amount of blood is likely to increase. Therefore, to sample one small area more than three times is rarely productive. It may be better to ask the patient to come back after one to two weeks for an additional sampling or to do an open biopsy. When sampling deep, non-palpable lesions, visualized by radiologic image or by ultrasound, I suggest a slightly different approach. After the skin has been cleansed thoroughly, the area is draped with sterile towels. Sterile gloves are used so that both hands can be used to guide the very pliable needle as it travels through the tissue. Now it is time to check the position of the needle. The needle needs to be placed well within the target and in a position so that when the needle is moved back and forth, it will stay inside the target. If the needle is shown barely within the target, and especially if it is placed in a close to tangential position, the yield is likely to be poor. Once the needle is confirmed in a good position, the stylet is removed and the syringe is attached. A syringe holder is usually not needed. Instead, the syringe may be held like this. In this position, the plunger can be easily pulled back and held in place during the sampling. Remember that a small amount of suction is enough. With the suction in place, the attention can now be turned to collecting the sample by moving the needle back and forth. The length of the needle excursions should be tailored to the size of the lesion. In other words, when sampling a small target, make short excursions in order to stay inside the target. In a larger lesion, longer excursions are usually more effective. If the lesion is suspended in pliable tissue, such as lung, the excursions may need to be longer in order to compensate for the target moving up and down with the needle. It is crucial that the needle tip is truly moving through the target. Rotating the needle does not appear to improve the harvest. After the sample has been collected, the suction is released without delay. The needle with attached syringe is pulled out and immediately handed over for preparation of smears. Time here is of the essence. Therefore, the person who is going to prepare the material should be standing right next to the operator during the procedure. Reach for the sample and have the workstation ready with all the equipment within a few steps. A new needle should be used for each additional sample in order to facilitate expulsion of the harvest and to avoid introducing already clotting blood into the subsequent samples. After each sampling, a portion of the material is evaluated for adequacy. The main requirements are that the stain is fast and easy to apply, and also that it provide enough detail to allow the microscopist to decide if the material is diagnostic. Toludine blue is my preferred stain, mainly because of its speed. Other commonly used stains are quick versions of hematoxylin and eosin, Papa Nicolau, and May Greenwald Gimsa. Diff Quick can also be used. Toluid in blue is very easy to use. After fixing the slide in 95% ethanol for about one minute, the slide is retrieved and placed on absorbent paper. One or two drops of the stain is placed on the smear and a cover slip is placed on top. I let the stain penetrate for about 15 seconds before removing excess stain by turning the slide and pressing gently. 
After wiping the bottom dry, the sample is ready for examination. After evaluation, the slide is returned to the alcohol container. The cover slip will fall off and the stain dissolve. The slide will be restained with Papa Nicolau for final evaluation.